talk about nine hormones that might be making or breaking your weight loss journey. The first one I would like to talk about is thyroid. I know most patients come in and they could swear that their thyroid is not working right. And they come in expecting me to find something wrong with the thyroid because a lot of people know this already that when your thyroid is not working right you probably are going to struggle with weight depending on of course whether it's a low functioning thyroid or high functioning thyroid that might mean if your thyroid function is low you're going to struggle with weight gain right if your thyroid is overactive you're going to struggle with holding on to weight which means you're going to be underweight so thyroid dysregulation meaning thyroid not working is never a good thing besides just weight the problem with thyroid is that it also affects over I mean probably 200 functions in your body on a daily basis so we definitely don't want to misdiagnose thyroid we want to make sure if there is a thyroid problem we want to find it so one of the biggest thing we do have to do with thyroid is make sure that the doctor is not just checking the test called TSH, which is thyroid stimulating hormone. That is just one of the screening tools to see if the thyroid is okay. If you're really suspecting that there is a lot of thyroid dysfunction in your family and that your thyroid might be underacting or overacting, you want to ask for the expanded thyroid panel, which means that the doctor also needs to check your actual active free thyroid hormones. So T3, T4, and also we can check things like thyroid antibodies, right? These are immune antibodies that sometimes attack the thyroid that doesn't let it function right. So we want to check those. We sometimes call it TPO for short, standing for thyroid peroxidase antibody, or we do other one we also sometimes check is called anti-thyroglobulin antibody okay so we want to check these antibodies to see if maybe the thyroid is okay but the immune system is attacking the thyroid and we call this condition Hashimoto's okay so we want to make sure that we're not missing anything when it comes to the thyroid so thyroid hormone not being optimal is one of the things that might be sabotaging your weight loss journey so the other hormone that we would like to talk about today is called leptin. This one you might have heard of, maybe not. It's not you know, talked about a lot, but it is something that is released from your actual fat tissue, your adipose tissue. So there is a certain type of fat cell that we have called white fat cells, and then there's brown fat cells. Okay, so Brown fat cells usually burn a lot of energy and we like those ones. And then there's white fat cell that doesn't burn a lot of energy, okay? So that white fat cell releases a hormone called leptin. And think of leptin like the hormone that tells your brain that you're full and that's its way of controlling your hunger. So if your fat cell feel like they, they're looking for partners, they want other fats, and you know how they say misery likes company? Yeah, fat cells like to bring a lot of company. So whenever you have a lot of fat cells, guess what they're doing? They're constantly signaling your brain to kind of bring, bring, it, bring some more friends. Okay, so leptin is one of those hormones that they actually release to tell your body whether you're hungry or not. And by doing so, they make you eat and eat and eat and gain more fat cells. So they're kind of calling for friends, if you will, okay? So leptin is something that we can actually test for and look and see if your level is high or low and it can be one of the things sabotaging you, okay? So next hormone that I we usually look at is insulin. I have seen so many labs come back with patients that have been struggling for years to lose weight and the doctors never check their insulin level. They check their glucose level, they check their cholesterol level, they check their blood pressure, they check their hemoglobin A1C, which we talked about the other day. Like, they check all those things, and those sometimes come back fine. But the doctor does not check their insulin level. Well, this is a problem because insulin 
is a hormone that signals for your body to store fat. So why wouldn't the doctor check that if you're suspecting or struggling losing weight? Or maybe even in some patients gaining weight, right? You want to check your insulin level. It is a simple blood test, the same way we draw blood for everything else. It's just an additional test that the doctor can add to see what your fasting insulin level is, right? So insulin will signal to your cell, hey, cell, take off this glucose, turn it into energy. Or if you're not needing energy right now, turn it into fat, right? And store it away. So you want to know if you have way too much insulin floating around. Because if that's the case, yes, it is going to be harder for you to lose weight because all this signal that's bombarding your cell telling it to store fat, store fat, store fat, right? So we want to find things to do that is going to naturally bring your insulin level down. And we're going to talk about those in other videos, what kind of supplements we can do, what kind of exercises we can do, what kind of foods we can do to help bring insulin level down. But for now, just know that you want your doctor to check your <laughs> insulin level, okay? So that is a hormone that will definitely cause your body to hold on to fat, okay? So next one, the third one, I'm sorry, the fourth one is cortisol. What is cortisol? Cortisol is, as we know it, commonly know it, is the stress hormone. Stress hormone cortisol is released in our adrenal gland. And the adrenal gland is this, whole, is this gland that sits on top of our kidneys. So we have two sets of kidneys, right? And it sits right on top of it. It's like a little triangular gland that releases a few hormones, but one of them is cortisol. So cortisol, if you think about stress, immediately think about cortisol because that is the hormone that surges into your system the minute you're under stress. And it was designed that way, right? Because take for example, if you're faced with a life-threatening situation where you needed to run for your life or you needed to fight for your life, well, cortisol is what you need floating in your bloodstream because what is cortisol gonna do? It's gonna shut down everything that is not necessary at that time, including digestion and all that, and try to make sure that blood flows to your eyes so you can see better, blood flows to your extremities so you can run for your life if you need to run, and focus on pumping blood to your heart so you can get oxygen in, through your cells and get things moving so you can either fight or flight, okay? You know, you're gonna run or fight, okay? So cortisol is that hormone that does that. But think about what needs to happen when cortisol is doing that. Well, cortisol has to shut down your digestion because you don't need to be digesting while you're trying to run. You don't need to be having needing to go to the bathroom while you're trying to fight, right? So it shuts down that process. Well, the process of shutting all that down means that you're not burning fat efficiently, right? You're not processing your, your meal uh, properly. So the higher your cortisol level, the more you're going to struggle with weight. Because now what cortisol is doing is we've got to store fat because we're going to need the energy from the fat store to fight or to run or to you know, be in a desert for a while or in the forest for a while without food to survive this lion that's about to eat us alive, right? So that's what cortisol is thinking and cortisol is doing. So everything cortisol is doing is not for fat burn. It's actually for preserving and holding on to fat. So you stress in itself can be detrimental to your weight loss journey, okay? So think about that the next time you are stressing about, you know, stuff you shouldn't be stressing about, <laughs> okay? Next one is, of course, your ghrelin. Okay, so that is the hormone that your stomach, mostly mainly the stomach, there's a few other cells or organs in the body that releases ghrelin, but the stomach is the major organ that releases ghrelin. So ghrelin was really not in the picture until we started talking a lot about, you know, bariatric surgery. And we were wondering why bariatric patients, after they've had their stomach cut down or cut off or, you know, stapled, usually will come back and say they don't feel any hunger. And it was later found out it was because part of the ruin Y surgery actually cut 
the part of the stomach that was producing this hormone called ghrelin. And ghrelin is the hormone that basically makes you feel like you want to eat, right? So if it's no longer there, guess what you're gonna feel? I don't wanna eat, right? I don't need to eat, to eat. I'm not even thinking about food, okay? So that's what ghrelin does. And we do see a lot of patients that have had bariatric surgery notice this huge effect that part of them not wanting to eat after their surgery is not just because their stomach is smaller, it's because their level of ghrelin has drastically fallen because that part of their stomach has just been taken out. So we do like this hormone because we understand that there has to be a signal, you know, that lets us know that we are hungry. Otherwise, some of us will just be busy all day doing stuff and never feed our body, never give the nutrient that's needed for our tissues to grow, for our you know, organs to repair itself and detoxify and all that stuff, right? So ghrelin was there for a purpose, but we don't like it when it's out of balance, when it has, when we have too much ghrelin, then we're hungry all the time, right? Which again, is not good. We don't want any imbalance, whether it's too much or too little. So ghrelin is another hormone that might be sabotaging you and you know a lot of times we think about it more in the bariatric setting but it is something we should think about in terms of like what else could be stimulating my hunger. Especially if you're someone that's hungry all the time. This is probably something to talk to your doctor about. The next one is your estrogen and your testosterone. And I'm going to talk about those together because well for men and women it gets very confusing when we talk about this too because automatically the minute I say estrogen everybody's thinking about a female and the minute I talk about testosterone we're talking about we're thinking about a male well here's the thing both men and women have the same set of hormones the difference is the ratio right so in men we have testosterone can be as high as 1200 you know units whereas in women we don't want it any higher than 300 Right, so, but in estrogen, the opposite is true. We want women to have estrogen higher and men to have very little estrogen. But we don't want a man that does not have any estrogen. Guess what? That man is not going to be sensitive at all. They're going to be having a lot of memory problems. They're going to be having very, very bad looking skin. I mean, there's a lot of other things that we worry about when estrogen is not optimal. I mean, preventing dementia, you need to have estrogen. So those are some of the things that we have to think about. So when we say estrogen and testosterone, we're talking both men and women. We need both, right? Because if a woman doesn't have enough testosterone, guess what? She's going to have more belly fat. She's going to have trouble growing, uh, building muscle. She's most likely not going to have a lot of energy. So there's all these things that have to be in balance when it comes to these hormones. So estrogen and testosterone for both men and women, they actually influence where and when your body stores fat. Okay, I'm gonna repeat that. Estrogen and testosterone influence when and where your body stores fat. So when you don't have enough estrogen and testosterone, you're going to start finding that you are having this abdominal fat gain. Okay, you start having what we call the bare belly, the postmenopausal uh, gut, right? We start seeing all these things because these hormones are low. So we have to be in balance at all times. That's the whole point. Okay, so when these hormones are optimal, we start to see shrinkage in this belly fat. So that is crucial because now as belly fat grows, now we start releasing other hormones that make more fat grow in other places and then more dysfunction in our heart, more dysfunction in our pancreas, more dysfunction in our liver, and so on, okay? So these two hormones are very, very important that we keep them optimal regardless of what age you are. And don't let anyone tell you that it's okay to be older with no hormones. Unless you're ready to die, you need hormones, okay? Because they are the chemical messengers of your body. Your brain needs the hormones to talk to your tissue. If you don't have hormones, the brain can't talk to your tissue. Like, how, the brain is not gonna step down, walk all the way to your liver and tell you what to do. It's gotta send something, and what it sends is the hormones. So you have to have the hormones for that to happen. So if you wanna live here on this earth long, 
and be functional and not be in a home somewhere where someone is taking care of you instead of you taking care of yourself, you want your hormones optimal, okay? So estrogen testosterone needs to be optimal at all times, regardless of whether you're in the post-menopausal era. It doesn't matter if you're in your 70s, in your 80s, you need to have optimal hormone levels, okay? So next hormone I'm gonna talk about today is called adiponectin, a hormone that helps to control the breakdown of sugar, right? So the, no, not the breakdown of sugar, but just, it helps you in controlling sugar levels and fat breakdown in your body, okay? So if your adiponectin level is not optimal, we're going to see some problems with fat breakdown, how you digest fats, and how your body controls your blood glucose level, okay? So I won't go into much into that one, but let's talk about the last one that I'm gonna go talk about today. Peptide Y, Y, okay? So we call it PYY, some people say. Basically, this is a, pe a peptide, a little small protein. When a protein is small in structure, in terms of its amino acid sequence, we call it a peptide. When it has a huge amino acid sequence, we call it a protein. So just so you, so you know that difference. So when, it, when we say a peptide, we're talking about a very small protein structure. And basically, this is one that is actually will bind and tell your brain that you're full and that you don't need to eat anymore. So those are some of the hormones that might be influencing different things going on in your body. You're not even understanding why all of a sudden you feel like you've eaten but you're still hungry. Or you've not eaten and you're not feeling hungry. You know, so different things might be going on. There might be an imbalance in these hormones, a shift in these hormones. Maybe your body's making one more than the other. Maybe your body, you know, has gone through a surgery that has cut part of your body out that supposed to release some of these hormones so you're kind of out of balance. So those are some of the things that we think about when we're, you know, you're coming in and you're having, you know, struggle with your weight. We're thinking about which one of these hormones potentially might be affecting you. And so sometimes we'll give you peptides as treatment to try to help correct some of this issue. Sometimes we've got to replace your thyroid. Sometimes it's not all the way low, but it just needs to be optimized. Sometimes it's just nutrients we need to give you, right? We've had patients that have, you know, thyroid dysfunction because they don't eat enough foods that have iodine in it. You know, we've had, you know, patients with, you know, really, really high estrogen level. And we need to try to get things into their body like cruciferous vegetables and supplements such as dim to help lower that estrogen level so that they're not constantly building fat, right? So there's a lot of things that we have to think and balance and shift so that your weight loss journey can be successful. Hopefully this has been helpful. If you have other hormones that you feel like I should have talked about and didn't mention, please mention them in the comment section below. I would love to make another video talking about those soon. All right, see you.